Dude, the actual EFMA contest A is coming up in a, exactly a week from when this video is coming out. This is horrible. Just kidding. It's okay, but we better be prepared. So let's do some more practice. I was looking at my past videos and it turned out I never actually finished the 2017 EFMA walkthrough, which is kind of weird because I haven't done a 2017 EFMA walkthrough in forever. So let's just finish that off so we don't have that hanging and then we can get into some other cool stuff. Also, I think that it's really useful to go over some of the newer contests like the like later prom because those are going to be the ones that you're going to struggle on the most during the actual competition. So, if you don't feel like like mocking a complete exam, just do some of the older, like the newer, late problems, if you know what I mean. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're going to be finishing off where we left off on the 2017 FMA walkthrough. And we left off on number 9, 9, 20. 20, that's what we left off on. So let's get it started. Alrighty, a particle of mass m is moving at speed. V0 collides with a particle of mass m, which is originally at rest. The fractional momentum transfer, F, is the absolute value of the final momentum divided by the initial momentum m. If the collision is completely inelastic, under what condition will the fractional momentum transfer between the two objects be a maximum? Okay. Okay, so we basically know that mv0 is equal to m plus m v prime. So we know that v prime is equal to mv0 over m plus m. And that means that the momentum of m is just going to be m m v0 over m plus m. Alright, so if we divide by the initial momentum of m, we get this. So we want m over m plus m to be a maximum. Okay. So if m is like really 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 small, well basically the bigger that m gets, like the little m, the smaller this thing is gonna be, right? So if we want this ratio to be even bigger, we need to make m like really 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 small. So basically that's the same thing as saying that a, m over m is very very less than 1. So 20 is a. So one one. If the collision is perfectly elastic, what is the maximum possible fractional momentum transfer? Okay, so we gotta do elastic collision now. So we know that mv0 is equal to mv1 plus capital mv2, and then we have the cool like relative speeds are the same. So we could do v0 is equal to v2 minus v1. Epic. And then if we solve this, we could eliminate. Well, we basically what do we want? We want v2. So v2. We could say v1 is equal to v2 minus v0. That means that basically what? Then we basically get that v2 is equal to 2mv0 over m plus m, which basically means that our fractional f is just going to be 2 uh, over m plus m. No, wait, that doesn't make sense. No, 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 wait. Oh, wait, and then multiply that by m. Okay, that's our fractional thing. So once again, our maximum f is when m is approximately 0, so that means that f max is basically equal to 2. So D. Alright, so if the fractional energy transfer is the same like definition, if it's completely elastic, what will the fractional energy transfer be maximum? Okay. So that's basically gonna be this squared times m over initial m v0 squared, which is basically gonna be m times 2m over m plus m squared over mv0 squared. Oh wait, there's a v0 here. So that just becomes 4. Wait, wait, wait. That just becomes 4 times m times m over m plus m squared, yes, m plus m squared. So it's asking for the maximum of this. So what does this maximize? We could basically maximize it, it this is like slightly harder, because if you make m really small, then your, oh, it's asking for what condition? Well, yeah, if you make m really small, then the numerator is going to be really small, even though the denominator is going to be smaller too. But if you increase m really big, then the denominator is going to get the numerator is going to get big and the denominator is going to get big. Hmm, how do we... Huh. Well, if we make them equal, then it's just going to be equal to 1. Then if we make it like 0.5, that's going to be 2m over like 3 halves squared. Okay, let's just say that it's like... Let's say that m is like k times capital M. Then we basically have that 4k over k plus 1 squared. And we want to minimize this. Yeah, that's right. So basically, we could just use calculus technically, but is there an easier way? I'm fairly sure it's going to be just one. Okay, let's 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 erase all this and see what we could do. So then we get four k over k plus one squared is less than some value eight. Okay, so four k is less than eight times k plus one squared. The partial fraction decomposed? No, but it's already wait what? Okay, let's just do calculus because that's the easiest way to do it. So it's going to be 4 times k plus 1 squared minus um, 4k times 
2 times k plus 1. And then all of that over k plus 1 to the 4, and we want this to equal 0. So that's basically going to be 4 times k plus 1 times 1 minus... So either k is equal to 1... Okay, so k is basically equal to 1. That's when it's a maximum. Epic. So we basically just need k is equal to 1, so that's going to be c. m is equal to n. 23! Okay, so a spring has a length 1 meter when there's no tension in it. The spring is stretched between two points 10 meters apart. Okay, so the, whale pu the wave pulse travels between the two endpoints in a time 1 second. The spring is now stretched between two points that are 20 meters apart. The new time it takes for the wave pulse to travel between the ends of the spring opposed to 2. Okay. So basically v in a string is basically going to be v root ft over n. So we know that 10 over uh, root ft over m is going to be equal to 1. Or this is mu actually, which is m over l, which so we put l over here. Wait, so how does the force change based on how much you stretch it? So we know that l gets doubled. Oh, but that means that force is going to get doubled? Because it's like kx, right? Oh, so force also gets doubled. So if we want to find the new time, you basically multiply force by 2, you multiply L by 2, so overall you're dividing by 2. M stays the same, right? Yeah, so M stays the same. So you're basically going to do 10 over 2, I mean no, 1 over 2. So 0.5 then. A. So one of 4. A ball of mass M moving at speed V collides with a massive spring of spring constant K mounted on a stationary box of M, of mass M in free space. No mechanical energy is lost in the collision. If the system does not rotate, what is the maximum compression x of the spring? Okay, so basically you got this fat box over here, and then M, and then it has a spring sticking off of it, and this other mass just comes running in and slaps onto that spring. Okay, and no mechanical energy is lost in the collision. So basically, it ends up with some center of mass speed, and we know that the center of mass speed is the same before and after. So, your center of mass speed is just going to be mv over m plus m. Okay, so this is the speed, so if we want to find the kinetic energy, we basically do this squared, one half, and then times m plus m. Alright, so that's our kinetic energy after the thing. However, it has to have some certain amount of potential energy, so basically we start with uh, one half mv squared, and we subtract out this new kinetic energy to get our potential energy. So, we start with one half mv squared, we subtract one half mv squared, m squared v squared over m plus m. And then this is going to be, we can factor out the 1 half mv squared times 1 minus m over m plus m, which is just equal to m over m plus m. Dude, it's so confusing with all these capitals. Dang, so many collision stuff. 1 half of that. And then times v squared. Okay, so this is our potential energy, very epic, and we can set it equal to 1 half k. Do we have k? Yeah, we do. And then this is going to be 1 half kx squared. So if we multiply it out, we basically get that k is equal to v root, um, what, m, m over m plus m times k, which is just, hey, epic, let's go, one last problem and we're Gucci, oh, yep, yeah. oh, no, gravity, what, <laughs> bruh, okay, don't worry, I love gravity, full disclosure, favorite physics topic ever, I'm just kidding, shh, don't tell me, all right, so a planet orbits around a star s, so my major axis is a, so at perigee, it is 0.5a, okay? When it passes point P, the speed is v1. What is the speed v2 when it passes perigee? Okay. So we basically have to find that radius. Once we find that radius, it's so much, so much easier. Because we know that angular momentum is conserved. So we just have to find that radius. Or at the very least, we need to find the ratio of the radius. It's radii, whatever, whatever it's called. All right, so we have, that's a beautiful list. That's an even more beautiful list. Okay, so you have a focus here, you have a focus there, and basically, let's say we have this point over here. It's basically going to be uh, A plus like another A. So the sum, so basically the definition of a lift is that to any point, the sum of the distances between the two foci is going to be exactly the same. So basically we know that for this lift, the sum of the things is just 2A. So over here, you have this length, which is what we'll call like C maybe, and then this length, what we'll call like R, I don't know. And then over here, we have, once again, the sum is like A plus A. Okay, well, let's call this X, this distance. So that means that this whole thing is going to be 2A minus 2X. So we know that R plus C is equal to 2A, and we know that 2A minus 2X squared plus C squared is equal to R squared. But dang, we got a lot of unknowns. Well, we had to find the ratio of C over X. That is what we care about. Oh, oh, it tells us what X is. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. 
Holy, wait, I'm trolling. So, so, it says the perigee the 0.5a. So this is just gonna be 0.5a. I mean, this is gonna be a. This is gonna be 0.5a. All right, now we gotta find this. So we know that r plus b is equal to 2a, and why don't we just say a is one? We don't really care about a. So let's just say a is one, r plus b is equal to two, and uh, a squared plus c squared is equal to r squared. Or uh, no, one, because we get a plus one now. So basically, if we so do difference of squared, we get r minus c times r plus c is equal to one, and that means that r minus c is equal to one half. So then if we add these two, you get 2r is equal to 5 halves, so r is equal to 5 fourths. So this is 5 fourths, that means that this is 1, and then 25 over 4 is minus 1. No, 25 over 16 minus 1 is 9 over 16, so this is 3 fourths, and then 3 fourths over 1 half is going to be 3 halves, and then you just do 3 halves times v1. Which is not an answer. Hooray. Bruh. What, 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 what? Well, wait, so we know that like mv1 r1 is equal to mv2 r2. But how do you get all those, like, random roots and stuff? Do we have to do conservation of, like, energy or something? Well, okay, well, I'm fairly sure, okay, so, I'm, like, 99.9% .9 sure that the radius and all that good stuff that we figured out is correct. So, now we just need to figure out how we're supposed to figure out the velocity. So, maybe it is going to be, uh, potential energy? So, basically, your change in potential energy is going to be 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. And then that's going to be equal to your difference in velocities. Which doesn't help us at all, holy. Wait, is it radius from the center? No, it's radius from the planet, I'm 90, 200% sure. What am I doing wrong, bruh? Wait, wait, wait. So, 1, 5 fourths, 3 fourths, that thumps to 2. Okay. That's 3, 4, 5 triangle. Oh, oh, it's not perpendicular. Oh my god, no. Okay, so it has to be perpendicular to find out angular momentum. So... How do we find the perpendicular? How do you find the tangent even of an ellipse? Huh, well, maybe we do have to do some random conservation of energy nonsense. Oh, right, let's try it again. So negative GMM over R plus one half MV1 squared is equal to negative gmm over three fourths or one half plus one half. and that basically gives you that if we add it three fourths no four thirds minus one half four thirds minus two actually so two thirds on this side and then is equal to one half oh 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 okay and then another equation that we do know is that okay another cool equation you know is that gmm over Neg negative gmm over 2a is equal to your total um, energy. So we basically get that our initial our initial kinetic energy is just going to be this plus this. Once four thirds minus one half, so that's going to be uh, eight six minus three six. So that's going to be five six. Okay, so five six is the initial kinetic energy. And then the final kinetic energy is going to be 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 halves. So it goes from 5 six to 3 halves. So that means that the ratio of these two, final velocity over initial. So 3 over, so 9 over 5. And then you take square root, so root, 3 over root 5. Very nice. That took a while, but we figured it out. Epic. Okay, let's check our answers. All right. A. D. C. What? No, 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 this is not okay, not okay, not okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, so we agree that B is equal to root Ft over mu. Okay. And then that is the same thing as root Ft L over M. Oh, but the distance double, oh no, god dang it. Ah, I forgot that the distance double, so it's, okay. We found that the, like, speed is increased by a factor of four. I mean, by a factor of two, but the length also increases, god dang it. Okay, yeah, so C, makes sense, makes sense, okay. And then we get A, and then we get A, epic. Alrighty, we did it, boys. We got through the 2017 FMA. Let's go. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know what other videos you guys want to see, because right now I'm just going off of what I want to kind of do, but if there's any suggestions you guys have, let me know. I hope this was helpful. Thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.